And we're about to draw tonight's uh, program to be looked at at the road office. Which will be a new challenge because I'm going to try to take this video and merge it with the one at, at work. So that way, a new challenge as I try to learn the video business. So I'll zoom out here. And there's a the continuing pile and the mystery box. One day we'll be opening the mystery box. So I'm going to pick one of these here at random. Let's see who we have. There we go. There's our winner. That'll be uh, what we look at tonight at work. Let's see if we can do this without a... Uh... Looks like it is from... North Carolina again. So my guess would be that it's not out of the question that we've got ourselves another... Uh, ACC basketball program or media guide or something along those lines. That's my guess. We'll see what happens uh, tonight from the road office when we open it up and take a look. Okay, we're back at the road office where we have our package here from July 20th before the uh, post office began to become slow as molasses, slow as frozen molasses, I should say. And it's from North Carolina, so although I don't really remember what this could be, I'm guessing it could be another uh, another uh, NC, another North Carolina, like an ACC basketball something or other. I can't say I know that for sure, but we'll. Uh, I've already prepped the package, but I haven't looked at what was inside. Okay, I was, I know what this is as soon as I saw uh, the cover of it there, uh, as soon as it came out. This is the 1976 media guide for the ABA Kentucky Colonels. This is the last ever Colonels media guide. And it um, plays off of Jaws, which was the big movie around that time. I like exclusive showings in Louisville and Cincinnati. That's, that's pretty funny because the Colonels did occasionally play in Cincinnati. Let's see if we can get this out of here without uh, screwing it up too much. The Colonels were uh, my favorite ABA team. So, uh, I told you this was kind of difficult for... Uh, for me, still getting used to, maybe I should talk to my daughter about how to do this a little, keep things a little more even. So Yubi Brown, who, who at this stage of his career was a coach and had not done television. So apparently the Jaws, just a World Series. The Kentucky Colonels challenged the NBA champion Golden State Warriors with the powers to be turned down that challenge quicker than you can say Artis Gilmore. Okay. The Colonels will be playing 28 games in Louisville's Freedom Hall and 14 in Louisville's New Riverfront Coliseum. Both of those buildings still stand, by the way. What's in store? I guess this is kind of like a a preview. This is Ellie Brown, who at the time was Mrs. John Y. Brown. John Y. would eventually divorce Ellie and marry uh, Phyllis George from NFL Today fame and recently passed away. Uh, John Y. decided to make Ellie Brown the chairman. Along, If you'll notice here, all of the names except for vice chairman, Kentucky basketball coach, and noted racist Adolph Rupp was the ceremonial vice chairman, but El all of uh, Ellie's friends here were on the board of directors, so it's kind of easy for her to get what she wanted, I guess. 
and we'll look at the front office. I remember David Vance, after he left there, he ran a horse track. I think uh, I remember seeing him on horse racing. Gene Rhodes, who was a former Colonel head coach. There's, there's a uh, staff directory. Ticket price is $750, $650, $450, and $3. You can't even park for $750 today. And then we go to Yui Brown. And the Teeth. Was that guy? I'm assuming it's the players. Louis Dampier, the longtime Colonel Point Guard. Bird Avery, for those of you that read the blog, might have uh, remembered recently me mentioning his recent passing. Alan Murphy and Jimmy Dan Connor, they were uh, Ted McLean, Will Jones. See, some of these guys weren't on the ABA championship team because this is the final year. This is the um, this is the before. It's like they're the defending champions, but they do not win it in the final season after they stupidly traded Dan Issel because John Y. Brown needed more money. The guy owned Kentucky Fried Chicken, and he needed more money. Artis Gilmore. Tom Owens, who had a, had a long uh, NBA career after the ABA folded, is Bill Walton's backup. And we've got uh, the Colonel's draft history. And the Colonel's radio network which has yep, has 12 uh, stops, 10, oh, no, no, let's see, three on one side, six, 11, 12 if you count Louisville. Can you imagine anybody telling now where, where the, writing it up where they're going to stay? Imagine that. I can't really imagine anybody you know, having that stuff available for public. And then there's some uh, statistics for the various kernels and the victims. Okay. Oh, okay. So there's some uh, like the directory for the uh, teams, other teams in the league, the New York Nets, who won the final championship, the, the Virginia Squires. Spirits of St. Louis, the Denver Nuggets, Utah Stars, and the Baltimore Claws, who they sold Dan Issel to, and the Baltimore Claws never played a game. Then we go to the other side, and we have the Indiana Pacers, the San Antonio Spurs, and the San Diego Sales. And I think this is, uh, yeah, this is all team records going into that final season for the Colonels and what they're for their opponents. And then there's a uh, who was leading in the ABA going into that final season. And it was the Colonel's Louis Dampier going into that final season with the most points. I imagine he probably held on to that because the two guys underneath him, Mel Daniels and Donnie Freeman, were probably close to washed up. And I can't imagine Dan Issel outscored Dampier by 2,000 points. And then talks about the guy who's the artist. And then through the years with the Colonels, how they did in their history. And uh, then over here, we have the actual schedule for 1975 and 1976. They opened it, opened the season against the San Antonio Spurs on October 24th. And their final regular season game appears to have been on April, on Wednesday. April 7th against the San Diego sales, which probably didn't happen because the sales went out of business. So I'm willing to wager the last game was probably that fourth Sunday, March, April 4th against St. Louis. And then we turn it over with a uh, very nice drawing of artist Gilmore and exhibitions against NBA clubs. Back then, they, uh, the ABA teams, the NBA teams would have exhibition games in the offseason. Colonel's exhibition season, October 4th, against the New York Knicks at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. Now, I'm, a, I'm going to guess that that was probably part of a doubleheader. They did do doubleheader games sometimes in these NBA-ABA exhibitions because 
Otherwise, I have no idea why they would expect people to draw people to come to New York versus Kentucky at Landover. So there you go, a very nice little uh, little uh, media guide of the Kentucky Colonels. I'm still looking for the actual the previous season uh, media guide, but very nice. All right, so there's uh, today's opening, the 1975-76 Kentucky Colonels media guide.